So once in a while when I make a video about certain topics, you'll get some kind of a notification below me if this is a controversial topic. For example, if the topic is viruses, almost always there is some kind of a side note about COVID. If I ever mention CO2 in any of the videos, that video will usually have a side note about climate change. And sometimes there are some other ones, but for the most part that's what I usually get as a science communicator. And so in this video we're going to basically be talking about both of those topics, so I'm actually kind of curious what the YouTube algorithm is going to classify this under. This is going to be more of a COVID related or climate change related video. Hmm. Anyway, on a more serious note, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're actually going to be discussing a relatively interesting paper that came out not so long ago that once again finds an intriguing link between CO2 levels and global pandemics. And to be more exact, it's based on a collection of several studies that investigate various atmospheric changes during some of the biggest pandemics in the world in the last couple of thousand years. And intriguingly, time and time again, there always seems to be a dramatic link between atmospheric composition or some kind of atmospheric pollution and major plagues or major pandemics somewhere in the world. And so let's discuss some of these studies in more detail, but first let's briefly discuss how this is actually studied and why this is such an interesting field of science that's teaching us so much about atmospheric history of planet Earth. It's all in essence based on this, and specifically those tiny bubbles. And this of course is a cutout from one of many many ice cores collected in various glaciers around the planet that various climate researchers have been collecting for several decades. With all of this being done using these relatively complex drills that can easily drill down up to 4000 meters or 4 kilometers, with each of the samples stored until it's used for some kind of a study, with each layer of ice capturing approximately a year of various atmospheric bubbles which can then be used to study what was happening back then. And obviously by going deeper and deeper into the layer of ice, you sort of go back in time more and more. And although most studies today mostly focus on CO2 levels and usually levels of other greenhouse gases, inside of these samples we usually find a lot of different pollutants as well, which can actually serve as a very important indicator for a lot of different historical events. One example is from the 14th century. By looking at various ice samples formed between 1350 and 1355, especially in the glaciers in various locations in Europe, the researchers discovered this unusual dip between the year 1349 and 1353 when measuring the concentration of lead. Intriguingly, something similar has happened in more recent times during the introduction of unleaded fuels, this happened sometime in the 80s, but in this case the dip here was approximately 10 times more. And though at first it wasn't clear exactly what happened here, this particular date directly coincides with one of the major events in Europe around this time. Today simply referred to as the Black Death. The bubonic plague pandemic between 1346 and 1353 caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis that potentially wiped out 50% of European population, killing over 50 million people in the process. But obviously the question is, why lead? Well, it turns out that the answer is really simple. Mining, specifically mining of a mineral known as galena, a mineral containing a lot of lead but also a really important source for silver. And so a lot of early mining essentially focused on trying to extract this in order to then retrieve silver from it. But the process of refining this released a lot of lead into the atmosphere which suddenly dropped during this period. And that's because during this time, for approximately 4 years, pretty much everything in Europe stopped completely. No mining, no manufacturing whatsoever, and basically everyone was just trying to survive. And you can learn more about this in one of the studies in the description. Naturally, something very similar most likely happened during the COVID pandemic as well. Now we don't actually have the ice samples for this yet, mostly because all of this is just very recent, but based on a lot of different computer models NASA released in the last few years, we know that during this time in many different regions, especially in China, there was a dramatic change in atmospheric composition, and all of this is definitely going to reflect on various ice deposits formed during this time. And that's because the shutdowns during this time dramatically reduced emissions in pretty much all major cities. With the decline in air pollutants and the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions possibly being one of the largest in the last 100 years. Here's actually a really interesting example of a dramatic drop in nitrogen dioxide in various locations in China but also in northern Italy, the first two regions that were studied in detail. And so here we had a reduction of CO2, a reduction of various particulate matter pollutants, 
and a lot of other gases usually associated with manufacturing and transportation. But because glaciers usually capture atmospheric changes around the same area where they're located, depending on where you collect the ice samples, you're going to get different results. In other words, these samples in China are very likely going to be different from the samples in, for example, Antarctica, even though there might be some similarities. But obviously, these samples in China are very likely going to be a lot more extreme. And that's sort of what's been happening with the samples that were collected about a different period of time, focusing on 1454 up to about 1688. Or basically, the so-called conquest of the New World. The colonization of Americas. But for this particular study, a lot of samples came from various locations in Antarctica. For example, a very famous location known as the Law Dome, where many of the ice cores are usually collected. But there's actually another location known as Waste Divide that's often used for ice core collection as well. And generally speaking, the samples from both usually complement each other really well, providing us with relatively similar data. And that's of course important if you're trying to confirm some kind of a hypothesis or some kind of a proposition. But there is a little bit of inconsistency when it comes to this particular period. The samples from Law Dome actually shows an extremely rapid decrease of CO2 levels that seems to have started in the early 1500s, stopping dramatically around 1610 with this extreme change only potentially having one explanation. Whereas the samples from this location don't really show us the same dramatic dip and instead shows a much more gradual decline that seems to last even a little bit longer. And so there's definitely a bit of a disagreement, but they both show us one thing. CO2 levels definitely dropped and dropped quite dramatically. It roughly looked like this. So here you can see the drop from about 280 ppm down to about 274 in a very short period of time. With all of this raising at least two questions. First, why the disagreement? And second, exactly what happened here? And the what happened part is very likely explained through historical accounts. This was very likely the result of the first contact between the old and the new world, with various sicknesses introduced by Christopher Columbus and his crew, causing a major pandemic throughout all of the Americas with some of the sicknesses from Americas then making their way to Europe and very likely causing pandemics in Europe as well. With these early conquests basically resulting in a dramatic drop in human population, very often causing native communities to abandon their settlements, thus allowing a lot of vegetation to regrow. And as a lot of these settlements became reforested again, they suddenly dramatically increased the absorption of CO2 from the atmosphere, dropping it by a tremendous amount. And so the CO2 levels definitely dropped. But it just wasn't clear by how much and if it was more dramatic or a little bit more spread out. And so in order to solve this, the researchers behind a recent study collected more ice samples from approximately 83 to 104 meters in depth, which basically capture the years 1454 to approximately 1688. But this was from a different location. A location known as Skytrain Ice Rise. Far away from two other locations, and basically presenting us with a third sample. And the results once again confirmed that CO2 levels definitely dropped, very likely due to changes in human activities and a dramatic increase in land vegetation. But they were probably not as dramatic as the first sample showed us. Here, CO2 decreased by approximately 1 ppm every 20 years, dropping consistently for over 150 years which actually resulted in about 2.6 billion tons of CO2 absorbed every decade. And all of this very likely the result of reforestation, which lasted for over a century. But since the results from Law Dome show us something more extreme, there's actually a chance that it's showing us some kind of an unknown CO2 feedback mechanism that could have been captured by this part of Antarctica and not other parts. In other words, the results here are not incorrect, they're just different because they're coming from different locations. But all three locations confirm dramatic changes in CO2, showing us how dramatic atmospheric changes can be when you essentially remove human activity from the picture, even human activity 500 years ago. But naturally, by trying to study these glaciers in maybe other locations, such as Greenland, researchers might get some other answers and additional clues. Either way, personally, I find this really intriguing. Just the idea behind pandemics and dramatic changes in human population by looking at tiny bubbles inside these ancient ice samples. With every single slice teaching us a little bit more about how humans change the world. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out other videos about ice cores or studies from Antarctica in the description below. 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.